Atomic Model History. So to understand the modern atomic model, we have to understand how that model developed. So we're going to take a look, a quick look, at the history of the atom and what made us understand and what questions left us that are left to us that made it possible to keep moving to the next model. So first let's start with Democritus. Democritus was a Greek philosopher and he thought he just thought about his atomic theory. He wasn't really thinking of a theory. He, was, he thought that all matter was composed of small, very, very small, indivisible and indestructible things called atoms. So, or he named it the Greek word atomos, which we get atoms from. And atomos means uncuttable or indivisible. So that's what Democritus thought. He thought all matter was made up of that. But Dalton came along and developed some theory based on some experiments that he did to think of understanding at atoms. The very first part of his atomic theory is that all matter is made up of indivisible and indestructible particles called atoms, which is very similar to what Democritus said. Next part is that all atoms of an element share the same properties. They all have the same size, mass, chemical properties. The elements of one atom are different from the atoms of all other elements. So that means those atoms are very specific to that element. The third part is that compounds are formed from two or more different types of atoms. And this is true because H2O, which is water, is actually made of a combination or bonding of hydrogen and oxygen together. And the last part of his theory is that chemical reactions involve the rearrangement of atoms. Just the rearrangement. So this is very important part of the theory to remember that holds true is that chemical reactions involve just the rearranging, separating, com combining of atoms. It is not, it does not create it does not, put does not create or destroy matter. Okay? This is called the law of conservation of matter. And this is a very, very important one. That's why I'm emphasizing it a lot. Because it's very important to remember that chemical reactions just involve re the rearrangement of atoms. So that is Dalton's atomic theory. Now let's take a look at identifying some atomic models from their descriptions and their pictures so that you know when asked what atomic theory and where it came from, what experiments it came from. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Thomson model. It's also known as the plum pudding model because Thomson's atomic model described the negative charges or the electrons that are scattered in a positively charged cloud. And this, this model was the result of the cathode, cathode ray tube experiment. And I'll describe that in a second. So this is the plum pudding model. Because he's English, there is something called a plum, a plum pudding which would have the pudding here, so think of this white space as pudding with the positively charged cloud that he's talking about, and these are the negatively charged electrons that are in the plums in the pudding. Now, cathode ray tube was simply that he saw that when he put a ray, when he put a ray using anode and cathode, is that he found that when the electrons kept moving through, that when he put a positive magnet that the ray was attracted to the positive magnet. And if you put a negative one, so if I did this and I put the ray here and I put a negative magnet here, it would be repelled. So it would go the other direction. So opposites attract. Opposite charges attract. What he found was that this charge must be negative because it was not attracted to the negative but attracted to the positive. And so there must be a part of the atom that has a negative charge. And that's how he came up with his plum pudding model. So remember, Thompson, plum pudding, electrons. That's going to help you remember that model. 
The next part of atomic model history is that Millikan did an oil drop experiment. The Millikan wanted to find out how much char electrical charge an electron had. Thompson found out how many grams it had, but Millikan used his experiments to measure the electrical charge of an atom. By suspending two oil drops of known density between two metal cathodes, the charge can be determined when he applied a known electrical field. And what he found was that the elementary charge of an electron is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, which is an electrical charge unit. So this, is, this gives us an idea about how much the charge of an electron really is. So the next model we're going to look at is Rutherford's model. Rutherford's model refuted Thomson's model because actually he discovered that an atom had a high concentration of a positive charge in the nucleus. This model was the result of his gold foil experiment. So what he discovered was the proton. He discovered that there's something in the center right here in the nucleus that has a very high positive charge and there are electrons floating around it. How he found that out was doing his gold foil experiment. He fired alpha particles, which have a positive charge, at a gold foil sheet. What he expected to happen was that this, this charge, because there's nothing to stop it, to stop this charge, would go straight through. And that happened. There was some of the charge that went straight through. But what he also found was that some of them actually went straight back at him and were deflected to other parts of the other parts of the experiment. And so he saw that it didn't go straight through. So the only way that this positive charge could be repelled so strongly is if there was a densely packed positive charge in the nucleus. And so he named that a proton. And that's how we discovered the proton, and it refuted Thomson's model. Even though he discovered electrons, it changed what we thought of the model of the atom. The next model we're going to talk about is Bohr's model. Bohr's model elaborated on Rutherford's model by quantizing electrons into specific energy orbits. We probably heard of electron of energy levels before. So here, what he did was he told, talked about excited and ground states to understand why different elements that have different electrons, number of electrons, have different colors and different, different spectra, as we call it, using other people's theories, Einstein and uh, a person named Planck's theories, to understand excited energy states and ground states of electrons based on the orbital energy level. So he thought electrons actually orbited the atom. And then we would later discover actually they use orbitals and we can't necessarily know the orbit of an electron because it doesn't go in one orbit. It's actually a cloud. So Bohr's model though did help us understand the idea of energy based on electrons. And that's very important to understand for understanding atoms and bonding. Last one we're going to talk about is Chadwick. Chadwick's research, he was an English physicist who actually bombarded a sheet of beryllium, sort of like Rutherford, and found that radiation was emitted. The rays that were emitted were electrically neutral and had a mass slightly greater than that of a proton. So Chadwick called these neutrons. So we've seen the development of discovering, Thomson discovering the electrons, Rutherford discovering the proton. But Rutherford knew that because of the different masses, he knew that something was missing because he saw that the mass of helium was actually greater than it was supposed to be. So there was something missing. And Chadwick, after using this kind of similar this kind of similar radiation uh, the experiment as Rutherford, he discovered that there was something called neutrons, and that helped him understand the mass problem that had been a problem before. So it's very important to understand the movement 
of the atomic model so that you can understand and look at the pictures and understand who discovered what.